Oksana, I want to start with the two points Boris Johnson made there. One is that the vaccines are working against the variants, and the other is that uh, that they work against, he has great confidence that they are working against um, the transmission. They are building up and stopping transmission. Does the data support those two messages from the prime minister? Uh, well, good morning. And starting with that first point, what we see is that there is a reduced efficacy for mild and moderate cases, but there is protection still in the most important categories of preventing severe disease. Um, and that is true for the AstraZeneca uh, Oxford vaccine in light of uh, various uh, Muta mutations and variants that we are seeing emerge. And we heard that verified uh, by the WHO that the uh, smaller study that first had uh, called into question its efficacy uh, that led towards a reduced rollout within South Africa. Um, but exp extrapolating from that study, uh, we still believe that there is significant uh, protection from, uh, again, preventing hospitalizations. And that's perhaps the most important feature uh, of the vaccine at this stage, this acute stage within the pandemic. Second, transmissibility. Uh, there is still ongoing research around the effectiveness for different vaccines on, on the level of that. But uh, again, the early data is supporting that uh, this is indicative towards being able to have a degree of confidence that uh, this will not only protect individuals from becoming sick, but also uh, ensuring that their neighbor is also. And, and that's really the uh, primary point that uh, we would see the, the cumulative benefit of mass vaccination campaigns kick in. And, and so that's excellent news. Um, good morning to you, Oksana. With that in mind, the concern is about the transmission rate of the variants, the UK variant in the United States of America. Do you believe that we are going to see a rise in the variant to become the norm in the UK, whether it's the UK or, or the South African variant? Is that a real risk? Well, uh, in the U.S., uh, the B117 variant, which emerged from the U.K., is looking to overtake the, the uh, original strain because it is that much more uh, infectious and transmissible. However, uh, if we look in the U.K. for the South African variant, um, it is still believed that it's not more transmissible than B117, so it's unlikely to overtake that as the dominant strain uh, within the U.K. Okay. But again, that needs to be closely monitored and probably more border controls in place than currently has been uh, enforced here in the UK as well, not just against the South African variant, but uh, for any future ones. Part of that also means the rest of the world has to step up on their genomic sequencing capacity uh, to mm -hmm. be able to understand how this virus is behaving, where it's popping up, how it's mutating. We have a big part of the world that's in the dark on this, and that could come back and, and bite us. Right. The U.K. is really doing mass volumes when it comes to that sequencing. Uh, Oksana, a number of 63, actually, conservative MPs sent a letter to Boris Johnson. They think that he should open once all those 50 and above get vaccinated. So that looks like April. But potentially, we're going to get more people vaccinated before July. Do you think there's a risk in opening up uh, by April? Uh, certainly, this is going to be uh, a, a very difficult uh, aspect to be able to contain community transmission um, and open up. I think last year we saw that issue play out where, uh, without the vaccine, uh, also to be noted, but there was a, a return uh, phase, there was no phased reopening. So I think the key here is now we have the tools to save lives, not only vaccines, but treatments as well. So we could be looking at doing it in a phased and controlled way because we can we know that the higher the level of community transmission, the more opportunity for these uh, variants to emerge. And that could undermine and threaten the success of the current vaccine program. And even though uh, pharma companies are saying they can make tweaks to these vaccines if needed, and they're already working on that to ensure that uh, any variants that do emerge, they'll be more effective against that higher efficacies. Uh, we still need to ensure that people are doing those basic public health measures. So I envision that, yes, there will be a push towards reopening, but in a more controlled way than we saw last year with many public health measures in place and alongside a more robust test and trace system. If we have that in place, we will be able to reopen um, sooner 
as the, the prime minister hopes, in that timeline. But without the test and trace, without better border control, uh, I, I, independent sage is incredibly nervous about that plan.